Hi. There are some things that make a huge difference between professional bird photographers that wins a lot of awards and traditional bird photographers like maybe us. And these things, nothing had to do with shutter speed, with aperture, with camera gear. These are other things. You guess what it could be? If you want to know, stay with me. Hi, I'm Mario Killian and welcome back to another video. The first thing that differentiates professional award-winning photographers is that they know what they are taking photos about. And that means, for example, an airliner photographer. Now, exactly what kind of airplane he's taking the photo, uh, how much people can get into the airplane, and what brand it is, and what model of airplane it is, from where it takes it off, from where, where will it land. And that's the same we have to know as bird photographers. We need to study birds. We need to know his migrations, his behaviors, and everything about birds. How can you do that? Easy. Read information about, about birds, buy you a book about birds, study where are the birds in different uh, times of the year, where are the birds in winter, what kind of birds we have in summer here, which is the behavior of the birds, in which part of the year they are more active, where they used to build his nests, where they used to hide. Are these birds shy or are these birds not shy? You can find a lot of information. So every time you take a picture of a bird, once you arrive at home, study about that bird. You need to be a professional in birds. If someone asks you about a bird, you have to at least know the answer to where this bird used to be, which is the part of the year where the bird is more active, where this bird used to, to build his nests, everything about birds. This is a key factor. You can't take pictures about something you really don't know how, it is, how is his behavior and his migration way to do? The second thing that differentiates professional photographers is that they know the habitat of the birds they are taking pictures. They know exactly where are these birds and what kind of birds I found in lagoons, in the mountains, in the woods. You need to know the habitat. You need to know, for example, swans. Are there in lagoons? Can I find any rivers? Which kind of birds I find in different parts of anywhere? And for example, for this, I use ebird.org. It's a nice website where I can find what kind of birds I can find in what kind of seasons of the year in any place. And that helps me a lot to understand where will be the birds and what kind of birds I will find in this place. The third important thing is to watch pictures from other photographers. And I'm not talking about comparing which picture is better, my pictures are worse, he is the best. No. I mean, see other pictures from other photographers to know what you liked from this picture. If I see a lot of pictures of birds from different photographers and ones of these a find I find very interesting. I need to know why I find this picture interesting. Was it the light? Was it the colors? Was that the actions of the birds in this moment? So if I see on I know what I like from a picture, I can know how I will take the pictures in the future. Of course, that doesn't mean that you have to get the 
the skills or, or the way that, that others take the pictures. No, but that means that you can see what is good of a picture and what is not good of a picture. And you can, can use this information to get better pictures for yourself. The next point is you need to know how to adapt your photos for a change in the climate. And I don't mean from one day to another. Today in the morning I went out with a sunshiny day and now it's nine, nine o'clock in the morning and it's absolutely cloudy. That means I can't take the pictures like I would take it with a sunshiny day. For example, in a cloudy day, I cannot, I, I need to avoid that in any picture, the sky will appear in the picture because this gray sky, it's not a good image. It's, it, it doesn't add value to your image. In this case, I have to take the pictures, taking care that the sky is out of the pictures. And that will, of course, improve my exposure and make more powerful the colors of the bird. But if I have the gray sky now as background, there will not be a good picture. So take care and be prepared to a change in the weather. Even if your plan is to go out to take pictures of big birds, there is always a high chance to find little small birds. And little small birds, of course, is something hard to take good pictures, it's like birds in flight. And for small birds, I have seen that some photographers use a good technique. I personally don't use it. But that means that when they focus on the bird, they have one bird, one eye on the camera and the other eye open watching the small bird. And meanwhile, they is focusing with one eye, the other eye watch how the bird is moving around. That's because small birds are very erratic in its movements. They jump from one branch to another and they don't stay still for a long while. And this is supposed to be a good technique. I'm still trying to use it, but it's not easy for me. I, I don't have a good sight, but it's supposed to be good. So maybe it can be a good chance for you to find out and get good pictures of small birds. The next point is have fun with what are you doing. I went out in the morning with a sunny day at nine o'clock it gets cloudy and now it seems to be a uh, strong rain in a few moments more. But whatever, you have to make fun about the day. Don't get sad, don't get angry. Enjoy every time, every part, every moment. If you couldn't get the best pictures, well, what's up next time? or maybe tomorrow or next week will be the day. But always have fun. If you don't have fun, maybe the next time you won't get out and you think that maybe it will be another bad day. But no, always have fun. Every day and every opportunity is a chance to get a good picture or just to watch nature. Bring your coffee with you if you smoke your cigarettes, but make the day a fun day. What is the goal of bird photography? In a lot of videos in internet, and I told it to you too, is that the goal is to get sharp image. But maybe sharp images of bird are not the best award-winning pictures. Maybe a slow shutter speed, a bird a little bit blurry can be the best picture of the year. Maybe patterns or some kind of colors are more important than just a sharp beard in the middle of the picture. So try it out. Find the perfect place, 
choose a slower shutter speed, just try to pan with the bird and get a blurry, very motion in the back of the bird. Even the wings of the bird can get motion. And maybe this will be a winning award picture. Now, why you are taking pictures? You're taking pictures for a therapy. You are taking pictures because you joy when you see the good pictures you took. You're taking pictures to show it to your family, to your kids, to your parents. You're taking pictures to show it to your friends, to compete in any award. This is a good question because in how and what's the motivation and the driver you have behind to take the pictures will finally get and say us how will be your pictures be. If you are only taking pictures just to compete in awards, maybe you are forced to take the pictures and the pictures will never be good. You will always be sad about the kind of pictures you took. But if the pictures you're talking are taking it for yourself, for your family or just for fun, maybe in this picture will be the best picture and that everybody will say what a kind of wonderful picture and sure that this photo will maybe win some award, a local award, a regional award, who knows? But these pictures you took with all the motivation just because you want to take a nice good picture for me is for sure the best picture. So do it for you. And so, I really hope you like this video. Personally, I think that motivation has to be the most important driver for anything that you're doing. In this case, bird photography or photography in general. So don't forget this and make fun from every day you go out. No matter what happens, the day will be almost perfect if you propose it to you. If you find this video interesting, maybe you consider to give it a like, maybe to share it to others and maybe to subscribe. And so, now go out and take your best pictures and I hope to see you next week. Bye bye.